Melrose, then up through the box, all the way into sixth gear, down the Wellington Strait, into Brooklands for the final time. Can Remy Garner win his fourth race of the season, his fifth race ever in Moto2? Can he emulate his father Wayne and go on and take victory in the way in the British Grand Prix in Moto2? And it's a good start from pole position from Marco Bezecchi, a bit of a wheelie from Sam Lowe's, but it's not a big run down to the line, and he gets the inside line. Jorge Navarro, look at him and look out from Remy Garner also coming through there, heading down towards Maggots for the first time. And Lowe's has picked up the position, he's picked up second place from Navarro, so it's position. Zeki leading from Sam Lowe's in second place. Sam's gone, Sam's the gone the round the outside of Bezeki and Lowe's takes oh. charge of the British Grand Prix in the opening few corners and he did it with a stunning move into the Haggis straight. Lowe's leads now from Bezeki. Navarro is second and Garner attacking him for third. Neil told us Sam said he wasn't going to leave anything out there at the British GP. Lap one, he means business. It's a stow though. Bezeki fights straight back. Will he run it a little bit wide? He's going to and Lowe's is going to get the line again through Stowe. Down the little dip they drop towards the Vale chicane. Again, Bezeki thinks about the inside, but Lowe's this time has him covered. It didn't work out for him in warm-up through there, but this time he's safely through. The championship leader, Remy Gardner, has a couple of moments through the chicane. His rear end is squirming around club corner, and he's lost fourth place now to his teammate Raul Fernandez ahead of Fabio Gian Antonio. So, into Abbey, and it is Sam Lowe's leading from Bezeki under pressure from Jorge Navarro now. Watching Digi there, he done well not to collect Remy Gardner into the club chicane, but Digi now attacking Remy again. So Digi's feeling good here on lap one, but the, the two Akiyo KTMs, they're stuck here together, but they're in touch with the lead three. Yeah, it hasn't gone all the wrong way. We talked about how much they dominated on that run of races uh, between Le Mans and over to Assen. One and twos all the way through for them. But on this occasion, they're battling for fourth place. Gardner right in the slipstream of his teammate, Raul Fernandez. Is he going to attack on the inside? No, not this time. He takes a tight line, but it's really more than anything holding up Fabio Di Gian Antonio. So around they come. Lovefield corner in front of the huge grandstands here at the British Grand Prix. And just listen to the crowd roar as Sam Lowe crosses the line in first place at the end of the first lap. Still 17 to go, but Lowe's exactly where he would want to be. That's how he planned to start it. He's done well to keep Bezeki at bay. Bear in mind that Bezeki's got that soft rear tyre, so it will provide that extra grip in these early laps. And Remy Gardner's come through at Cox Corner on Raul Fernandez. So Gardner, who also has shown pace this weekend, he's up into fourth place in behind Jorge Navarro as it starts to, I was going to say, settle down a little bit as Fabio Di Gian Antonio looked on the inside of Raul Fernandez. Round into Chapel Corner and onto the Hanger Strait. Yeah, sometimes we see it difficult for the guys to to get the tyres up the temperature straight away and a cool track here today, it looks like the top seven, top eight, they're all in touch. Aaron Cannett's back there in eighth, but he's got the speed. Here comes Gardner into Stoke Corner and Di Gian Antonio on to Fernandez. So Gardner to third, Digi to fifth place. He runs it off track though, Di Gian Antonio. He's taken onto the outside of the track in the green. A couple more of them and he'll be getting a warning from race direction. They may even give him one for that because in the process of making the move, he ran it outside track limit, so he may be told to drop a position, but uh, he has got through on the track in front of Raul Fernandez and into fifth. Yeah, perhaps he will get that uh, lose one position signal on his dashboard, but um, yeah, if not, it will be one mark towards that five thing they're allowed before they get the long lap penalty. In the early stage of the race, you just saw the rear stepping out there on Remy Gardner through far corner. We've seen so many people go down there this weekend, but the rear sliding and leaving a big black line on the track from the Australian even on these early laps in this 18-lap Moto2 race. Yeah, Remy's not scared of rear wheel steering it, so he does like to tip the throttle down, really steer that back to the rear, as Bezeki sets up the move on Sam. Bezeki into Brooklyn, he was lining that one all the way up from the loop. Uh, Sam tried to do the cutback on him, but Bezeki did well, got his bike stuck right in the middle of the track, and no way back from Sam Lowe's. But this is what Bezeki needs to do at this stage of the race. Sam needs to get him working that rear tyre as much as he can, so that he he has the edge in the latter stages. He'd love to be in front of him, but if he's in behind him, Lowe's just has to try and stick with the Italian. Yeah, that move was set up, running through the entry there. It's a third gear corner, and you, whenever you've got that extra grip, you can build that momentum onto the straight. A little bit of draft, and then he pulled out. Nice clean move down into Brooklyn. So Bezeki trying to make hay while the sun shines here. Make use of that soft tire while he's got the extra grip over his rivals.
Remy Gardner is the fastest rider on circuit at the moment at 204.7 from him. I don't think Lowe's will hit the panic button just yet with the two fast riders around him. Lowe's built into a race and has shown over recent weeks, in fact, throughout the whole season, late on, he has decent pace. Pasecki has been known to fade, even though that used to be one of his strong suits. Jorge Navarro there in fourth spot. Whereas Pasecki's gone with a soft rear tyre, Navarro's gone with a soft front tyre. He seems to be able to make that work on board that speed up, but maybe that will tell its own tale in the latter stages of this one. Yeah, it seems to be that's been a breakthrough for him. He really struggled with confidence in the front end of that machine all season. He really couldn't find a setting that worked for him. Dunlop brought that new option rear tyre, the softest front motor two tyre that used this year. And all of a sudden, Navarro's been on the pace right from free practice one. The front seven breaking away slightly, the usual suspects, I would say, in Moto2. Perhaps Navarro and, of course, Digi's a race winner this year and will move up to MotoGP next year. But uh, some familiar names, the other five are the ones that we would expect to be around there, including the winner last time we came here to Silverstone for the British Grand Prix back in 2019, Augusto Fernandez, Sablo's teammate, rounding out that front seven. Yeah, it's a fast group, actually. It's a brand new best race lap for Moto2 from Remy Gardner. A 204.7. We did see a 239 in qualifying, so there's a little bit left out there, but a low 2 minute 4 in race conditions would be superbly fast. But Zeki's gone deep there. Really, really deep. Cuts back across. Just, uh, he's not really a swooping line, though, that one. That was one where he'd just gone a little bit further than he'd like on his braking marker. On board with Remy Gardner. Fifth gear as they come through Woodcut Corner. Apparently down the home straight, he's strong through here. Gardner lets the rear step out on him, but when he finds grip, he can fire it down that home straight. Third lap completed, Gardner in third. He'll be happy with this one, because in terms of his title rivals, Pazeki's out there in front, but uh, in, in the championship itself, he's 47 points down on the Aussie. Sam passed through Brooklyn's, or through uh, Maggots into Beckett's there, but listening to that 765 sing through Woodcut there, you could hear Remy never rolled out of the throttle, 100% commitment, a bit of rear spin through there, helps him steer the bike, and that medium rear tyre, it will take that abuse, so that's where Bezeki has to be a little bit more gentle, so you can see Sam and Remy being a little bit more aggressive, a bit more wheel spin. It's going to be intriguing to see how it pans out. Lorenzo Baldessari's come back in, problem for the MV Augusta, uh, he's also still nursing a few injuries, Balder, but it's not quite working this year for Ian Balder. Once a MotoGP prospect, now his career is uh, looking on the wane a little bit. Not what we like to see at all, because there's bagfuls of talent in Balder. This has turned into pretty much a seven-bait group. I thought Aaron Cannon could hang with him today. He did set the fastest lap throughout free practice with a 2-4-1, but on the race conditions here, it's not quite working for him. He's dropped away from that group and he's battling with Chabi Vier Hing. Different approaches through farm and up towards village, and you can see it's going to cost Sam Lowe's on this occasion. Run it a little bit deep, and he compromises entry into the village corner and into the loop. Remy Gardner is able to take over from Sam Lowe's in second place. So Lowe's drops one place further back, but again, as I would say, Lowe's has just set a personal best lap in this race and he will build into it, but don't want to lose touch, you don't want Navarro and uh, Di Gian Antonio coming past you. That's what happened in, well, in Austria and a couple of other races. And you just lose touch slightly and you do with your chances of victory at the same time. Yeah, as long as Sam marks Remy, I think he'd be safe because we've seen in early races this season where Bezecchi, he always does fade when grip drops off. Apart from in Austria where he took the victory, it's been typical for Marco Bezecchi to struggle in the later laps. Well, even in Austria, actually, though, he did drop in the middle part of the race. He really did drop back. He was attacked a couple of times, didn't he, by Remy Gunn. It was Gardner's mistake, really, that allowed him to open the door again for him. But he did take that opportunity. And Bezecchi, as we know, is a hugely talented rider. He's a cool customer, too, Marco. And he's leading this one with a plot. Sixth and seventh dropping off slightly to two Fernandes. Raul from Augusto. Losing a bit of touch on Digi. Yeah, just struggling to hang on there, which is unusual. Ralph Fernandez has been one of the fastest guys throughout the season. Normally, he can find the pace, he always digs in in the race and he gets quite aggressive, but not quite working for him in these cooler conditions. He's only lapping in the mid fives at the moment, so 2 5.6 last time around. I am liking the look of Remy Gardner in these early stages. I have to say, the way he uh, drove away from Sam Lowe's heading down the hangar straight on that occasion, really keeping tabs on Bezeki. And I think Remy. 
knowing Remy will probably want to go past, but I think sitting here for a few laps wouldn't do you any harm whatsoever, would it? Yeah, exactly. Well, Remy let his championship lead kind of disappear ever so slightly in, in uh, Austria, so it's down to 19 points heading into this race today. And knowing that Ralph Fernandez is behind Here him, goes. Remy's gone straight to the front. He is aggressive, Remy Gardner. And he's going to take over at the front in this race. Maybe Bezeki can do the cutback on him, but I think Gardner has got it just about right coming through there. So Bezeki lining up in behind him, but go too early. Is your tyre going to last the distance? Who's going to judge this one? You really have to be careful on how you run it. And Bezeki is going to fight back. This is going to help the rest of the field. Get close. Oh, it got tight in there, didn't it? Bezeki just rolled out of it at the end into Brooklands. Yeah, Remy just leaned on in there. He knew he had enough of a bike in front that perhaps Bezeki would back out of it, and he managed to do that. So it's because it's a long entry there, you can actually get hold of the rear brake pretty good with the right foot, and Bezeki was able to slow that deceleration down right to the apex. Definitely managing tyres at the moment, because 205 there from uh, Remy Garner, a 5.4 from Bezeki, a 5.3 from Sam Lowe's, as it was from Navarro behind. Uh, right down to Pierre Hayes also in the 5.3. You do feel like they should have more, now they can drop down into the 204s, but if you go there too early, too quickly, when it gets to lap 17 and 18, you're going to be riding around on fibres. Exactly, you can't push these tyres at 100% commitment every lap for 18 laps, you will fall foul in the latter laps, so yeah, you have to manage it. We did hear consumption was an issue, especially for the soft rear tyre, and uh, Gary Purdy told us this morning during warm-up, he felt that the harder option would be the best race. Here comes Bezeki again, so the Italian has fought back on Remy Garner through Stoke Corner all the while. Sam Lowe's tried to muscle his Mark BDS bike, Bezeki into Bale. A lovely move from him at Stowe Corner. It's the, one of the classic Silverstone manoeuvres. Sometimes there's a chance that he might run it that little bit too deep in there and the other rider can come back at you on the inside, but not on this occasion. Just placed his bike perfectly in there. Yeah, Marco fighting back straight away. He's looking good. Actually, have a quick look at the rear tyres and you can see a little bit of marking on the left side of Remy Gunners as he rear wheel steers around Farm Ben. Maybe he feels it's something he can manage later on. Oh, he got tight into Village on that occasion. But you are going to manage. Oh, that got close in there. Bezeki had a moment in the middle of the corner. I wonder if that was uh, just a little issue from him with, in terms of changing gears. Yeah, he, it looked like he just tapped on the tyre and lost the rear tyre. And Remy done well not to make contact with his rear exhaust. He, he was so close to his back wing. I think we lost Hector Garso, perhaps. as a yellow flag in the third sector. Not quite sure what happened. Let's have a look elsewhere. This is Marco Bezeki's moment here. Oof. It was going away from him there. I think the front might have started to get away from him right at the apex. Late to pick up the throttle and Remy tapping onto it, almost run into the back of him. So done well not to make contact. But yeah, I think it was a bit of chatter actually right at the apex. You can see through the camera. So, Marco Bezeki reclaimed the lead and he's given it up again. And Sam Lowe's, who I thought actually was just starting to drop a little on the lead duo, actually, as it stands, we've got everything going on in front of him. Still sat there comfortably within half a second. Yeah, this group of five riders, they're all within reach. And you would, I thought Navarro might be stronger in the early laps, but we know that the, the speed up the Bosco Oscuro chassis, pretty good in terms of race distance on that rear tyre. Yeah, he has just lost his uh, fourth place on that last lap too, Di Gian Antonio. But I think we've said, even though we've uh, still got 11 and a half laps remaining, nothing to worry about just yet for the Spaniard. Marco Bezeki all over the back of Remy Garner heading towards the Vail chicane. The left, right flip flop. Got to get good acceleration out here. And then you've got to use all that. You don't want to mess it up because then you lose it through club and you lose it all the way down the Hamilton straight. You can see in the top of your shot, Chavi Vierge working hard to get across to the two Fernandez. Both Augusto and Raul are there and Actually, Joe Roberts just joining the party as well. So Joe's in behind Darren Cannon. So that looks like it's going to concertina into a, a big group, that battle for uh, for Sigton and downwards. Yeah, isn't it interesting? We uh, often say sometimes you can gap things a little bit in Moto2. But today, this is the one that's going to give us close racing as Augusto Fernandez comes through on Raul. Raul did look like he might have been holding up Augusto. But you can guarantee the young rookie will fight back. But it just doesn't look like he's been quite on the money this weekend. No, it's missing a little bit of something for Ralph Fernandez, which hasn't happened often this season. He's always able to deliver, but 
yeah, happened Austria 1, he turned it round with a, a victory, Austria 2, and here at Silverstone it's been a little bit of a struggle for him. And that little change in the uh, Fernandez show has meant that Xavier has had the door open to him and he's closed in again, so he's right on the back of the bringing Canet, Roberts and Agura into the fight. Again, Marco Bezzecchi has a look on the inside of Remy Gardner as they head through Cops Corner. Still 11 laps remaining in this race. And still, we are no closer to knowing as they hit the limiter and the tip through and into Maggot. Still no closer to knowing who's going to run out victorious. I wouldn't like to predict it at this stage. No, no, Remy's well positioned and we know that he's aggressive and he typically likes to sit behind him whenever it's a group battle and then uh, kind of plot how he's going to approach the end of the race, but he's happy to lead from the front. With things having settled a little bit, as in no one making too big a move at the front. Lap times dropped quite a bit on that one, uh, about three or four tenths of a second. It was a 2.050 from Bezeki, lows of 2.052, and just eking up the pace that little bit now. We're getting towards the halfway stage in this one, and it is a little bit about management. Further back, Aaron Canitz done a 2.05 dead. You know, there, there is a chance that some of these riders a little bit further back are going to start pushing the pace on. Uh, you can see actually Augusto for now. Final podium spot, it just looks like Navarro's got enough breathing room between he and Sam Luz. It won't give Sam an opportunity here on the last lap. It would require a bit of a mistake from Navarro to get Sam back on the box at home. We talked about the, this being a significant British Grand Prix as regards the title in MotoGP. Could this be where Remy Gardner takes a huge leap forward towards the title in Moto2? Marco Bezzecchi's doing everything to try and hope that that isn't the case because he's just set a new best lap of the race. Then he was beaten by Jorge Navarro, but he was a tenth quicker than Gardner on that penultimate lap. It's the last go around through Maggots and Beckett, then up towards Chapel. Around the right hand and then into the left of Chapel and onto the hanger straight for the final time. Bezeki's looks strong down to straw on every lap. Has he got something in stow on this occasion? I don't think he's close enough. He was just a little bit too far back through sector one. Usually he'd be already on the back wheel, so this overtaking into here isn't possible. Maybe into the Vale chicane. We did see him try it earlier with a good acceleration out of Stow, but I don't know if he's close enough. I don't think he's close enough on this occasion, Michael, as Gardner has it covered. Where can he conjure up a move? We know this is a sector now where Gardner will let it all hang out, hang loose. The surf kid from New South Wales, Remy Gardner, through club corner now. Down the international pit straight, he's so strong through here, he's not going to give Bezeki a chance, surely, on this last lap. You can see a wiggle from Bezeki, he was trying to wind on the throttle a little bit too early, a bit of a spin up and pump and move as Remy Rear Wheel steers it round far for one last time. So does Bezeki, pushing so hard, doing everything he can, but Gardner appears to have it covered. We come into the final sector of this race now, through the loop into the little entry corner, up the gear he goes, then up through the box, all the way into sixth gear, down the Wellington straight, into Brooklands for the final time. Can Remy Garner win his fourth race of the season, his fifth race ever in Moto2? Can he emulate his father Wayne and go on and take victory in this race? Will he go on and become world champion? The way he has performed today suggests that he is on his way to take his maiden victory in this championship. He comes around Woodcut. For the final time, Remy Gardner wins the British Grand Prix from Marco Bezzecchi in second place. Jorge Navarro takes third. Sam Lowe's a great fourth place for him. Fabio Gian Antonio has taken fifth back from Augusto Fernandez right at the death. But delight at one side of the IO garage. Despair in the other for Raul Fernandez. Remy Gardner has won the British Grand Prix. And in doing so, he's extended his championship lead to 44 points.